WFSB, Connecticut's number one local news. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News This Morning. Good morning, everyone. Today is Wednesday, January 4th. I'm Nicole Nalepa with your top stories, and we are following several top stories for you right now. It is a big day in Hartford as Governor Ned Lamont and Lieutenant Governor Susan Bicewitz will be sworn in for their second term today. Now, in a statement, Governor Lamont said in part, quote, it's an honor to have been selected by the people of Connecticut to serve a second term as governor. And Lieutenant Governor Bicewitz said, quote, Governor Lamont and I are honored to have the opportunity to represent the people of our great state for another four years. Here is a look at how the day will look. At 10 a.m., the Lieutenant Governor will receive her oath during the Senate session. And then at noon, the inauguration ceremony will officially kick off. And Governor Lamont will deliver his State of the State address at 1. And at 6.30, the inaugural ball will start. It's also important to mention Michael Bolton, Bolton Connecticut native, is going to be singing the Star Spangled banner at the ceremony at noon too. Pretty cool. Happening today along the shoreline, Governor Lamont and Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg will be speaking in New London. And this is all to celebrate the $158 million grant, federal grant that is, that Connecticut will receive from the new infrastructure law. The legislation will help accelerate repairs to the Gold Star Memorial Bridge. The bridge is at a little over one mile in length, which makes it the largest structure here in Connecticut. The event will take place at 3 p.m. right underneath the Gold Star Memorial Bridge. Now to an awful story we are following for you. An unnerving call to police in Stanford led them to a gruesome discovery. The body of a two-year-old boy was found in Cummings Park, and now one of the parents is a person of interest. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Audrey Russo has the details. It began Monday morning, just before noon, when Stanford officers received a call saying a child may have been harmed. They were directed to Cummings Park, where they found freshly moved dirt and a plastic bag. Inside, they located the body of two-year-old Liam Rivera. Police immediately began their investigation, eventually determining the suspect was the child's father, 26-year-old Edgar Ismale Gomez. They found his car around three miles away in Scalzi Park. Ismale Gomez was arrested after police stopped a taxi he was in early Tuesday morning. He's being held on a $3 million bond for an outstanding warrant for violation of probation, unrelated to this case. Without Stanford incident. police say it's been a horrific past few days. What I can tell you is that we know what we sign up for as police officers. We know there are days that are tougher than others. What the officers saw yesterday is not something they signed up for. For Channel 3 Eyewitness News, I'm Audrey Russo. A longtime and successful girls basketball coach at East Hampton High School has been suspended as the district investigates his actions during a recent game. Video shows Sean Russell pushing one of his players from the side of the court right toward the other. Now the coach is on leave while the district does a complete investigation. Meantime, Russell remains on campus in his role as athletic director. All right, hi everybody, good morning. 43 degrees right now in New Haven. That's remarkable, 23 degrees above average. 20 is the typical overnight low. Minus nine is the record for a day. It can be cold. I know you're looking at the, out the window going, it's not cold out there this morning. In some towns it is. Todd and Colebrook had 36. We're at 39 at Bradley. But 43 in New Haven, that's pretty remarkable. Our Doppler scans to stay dry. That's going to change later this afternoon through this evening as we're expecting more rain. And we've got cloudy conditions out there and foggy conditions as well. And the roads are wet, so please be careful driving around, okay? Here's the visibility. Two miles at Bradley, half a mile in Willimantic. A uh, tenth of a mile in Waterbury, a quarter of a mile in New Haven, a half a mile in Bridgeport, one in Danbury. You get the point. It's pretty foggy out there. We picked up about another tenth of an inch of rain overnight uh, since midnight. That's when the clock resets on this particular graphic. So this does not encompass what we got yesterday. <clears throat> I spoke to Jeff in Staffordville. He let me know he got 0.7 seven tenths of an inch of rain. So that's a pretty good amount of rain over the past 24 hours. Look at the temperatures. East Hartford again, a little cool there, 39, but compared to where we should be, now that is just incredible. 43 in Willington this morning. Here are the numbers. Uh, the hot spot right now is Danbury at 54. The cool spot right now is Bradley at 39. A little tough to scour out that colder air in the Connecticut River Valley. So dress accordingly. You certainly need a coat out there this morning in parts of the state. But by later on this afternoon, as temperatures get close to 60, yeah, I don't think you're going to need that jacket. That's for sure. 
Uh, the temperature differential from yesterday, we're up anywhere from three from uh, goose eggs in New Haven, flat at New Haven, to 13 degrees warmer in Waterbury. That's pretty remarkable. And the winds are basically calm this morning. So let's check in with our satellite and radar. One batch of rain moved through in the overnight hours into very early this morning. That has now made its way off. We're expecting some, maybe some partial clearing, maybe some limited sunshine, and that'll help boost the temperatures up close to record-breaking levels today. Look in the lower left-hand portion of your screen. That's another batch of rain that's going to be with us for the evening commute. Unfortunately, it is bringing the threat for severe weather to our neighbors to the south, but not here in Connecticut. Let's watch early morning future cast tomorrow's weather today. 1 o'clock this afternoon, we're good. And then here comes that rain anywhere from 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 o'clock tonight. And it kind of winds down after midnight. And then temperatures tomorrow, we start off mild in the mid-40s, but those numbers drop through the day tomorrow with mostly cloudy conditions. There's that watch box, that tornado watch box for uh, portions of Georgia. It seems to have shifted uh, still in parts of Alabama, but now in Georgia this morning. So keep a good thought for those folks um, as uh, they are dealing with some turbulent weather. Our forecast calls for temperatures in the low 50s, maybe some mid to upper 50s in parts of the state, maybe even 60 degrees. We call for more of the same along the shoreline. Pretty remarkable day of weather. So we're going for upper 50s to near 60. Record warmth is a possibility. Sun was up at 719 or is up at 719. Sun sets at 433. And your seven-day forecast includes dropping temperatures tomorrow. And then winter's back for Friday through Tuesday with a chance for rain or snow shower. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday are dry but chilly with temperatures again back in the mid to upper 30s. 706, Nicole, we'll send it back to you. All right, thanks, Scott. The House of Representatives session will resume at noon today, and the calamity could continue. Yesterday, Congressman Kevin McCarthy failed to secure enough Republican votes to become the next Speaker of the House. Now, division within the GOP resulted in three failed rounds of voting. And what happens next is really anyone's guess. The last time a Speaker of the House election had numerous ballots was back in 1923. McCarthy has not given up, but he needs to secure 218 votes to win the speakership. Members are talking. We're uh, walking through. I think we'll find our way to get there. And uh, this is a healthy debate. It might not happen on the day we want it, but it's going to happen. Without a speaker, the House of Representatives can't do the work of the people. Members can't be sworn in, and committees can't convene, and the chamber can't even vote on bills. Thank you so much for tuning in to Eyewitness News on this Wednesday morning. Remember, you can get news and weather updates anytime on the Channel 3 app. Have a great day, everyone. Be healthy. Stay positive.